Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, <clears throat> I uh, picked up a record yesterday and I posted a picture of it on Facebook and it got a lot of responses, um, people asking different questions, um, you know, uh, why is this record so special, um, and people that know the record that I posted and that do know why it's special had questions about, you know, how much did I pay for it? Where did I find it? Blah, blah, blah. So I thought I'd make a video um, just to kind of answer some questions about the record, uh, talk a little bit of history about, about the record itself, um, and how I happened to come in possession of the record. Um, anyways, the record I posted uh, yesterday was this copy of Motley Crue's Too Fast for Love. It's their first record. Um, came out in November of 1981. It just recently celebrated an anniversary on the 10th of November. Um, what makes this version um, of the record so special is before Motley Crue got signed, um, they put this record out on their own record label called Leather Records. And they did three different pressings of Too Fast for Love on Leather Records. And this happens to be the second pressing. Um, each pressing that they did on Leather Records had different quantities, and each time they would uh, sell out the previous uh, pressing, they would print more. Um, and there's some minor variations on the cover and on the label um, that distinguish which pressing uh, you have. But this is the second pressing um, on Leather Records, and here's the the label um, and like I said the cool thing about this is it is you know the second pressing of the first version of the record and uh, it came out in 1981 um, which in 1981 Motley Crue wasn't really known outside of the Sunset Strip you know Los Angeles area uh, so they're just a local band doing their thing and they put out their their record in hopes that they would be uh, the next big band um, and it took about a year and they eventually signed uh, to Electra Records and Electra reissued Too Fast for Love and the cover was a little different and the biggest difference between these two the two versions um, when they signed with Electra they um, remixed a lot of the tracks and actually re-recorded a lot of the tracks. So it's pretty much a different record um, sound-wise. Uh, the, the first version, you know, is a lot more raw, uh, different arrangements of the songs, uh, maybe a different guitar solo or different vocals uh, added in. Uh, so it sounds a lot different than the version that the people know that came out a year later. So anyways, there you have that. That adds to the collectability of the Weather Records version um, and why people look for this because it hasn't been reissued. Uh, there was a limited reissue done with this mix in 2005 um, on a small label called uh, Hippo Select, I think was the label that uh, put this out. Um, but even that, that version of this mix is hard to find. So. Anyways, um, a little history of my journey with this record. Um, I remember in 1981 actually holding a copy of this record, and I had no idea who Motley Crue was at the time, but um, 1981 was kind of a year uh, for me uh, when I really started collecting records. Um, I was like 12 or 13 years old. And I was going to the record store and just kind of, you know, discovering things. Um, I actually went to this store in my hometown. It's called Sights and Sounds. And the guy that owned that store was really in the know about things that were happening, like in the UK or on, you know, stuff that was happening on the West Coast. And he would have all these cool records in his shop that no other shop in town would carry. Um, and he'd always lead me in the direction of, you know, hey, you ought to check out, you know, this band Motorhead from the UK or 
you know, uh, check out Saxon or Iron Maiden, you know, none, none of these bands were known at the time, so I would just take a chance on them. There was no way to look them up on the internet or whatever, they weren't getting played on the radio. So you would just take a chance on stuff and and buy it and, you know, hopefully it was cool. Sometimes it was great, sometimes it was not so great. But anyways, um, I actually remember being in the record store, you know, holding this record and looking at it and thinking, well, it looks kind of cool, you know. And I just sat it down because I didn't know who they were and I bought something else that day. And then I just didn't even think about the record anymore after that. Uh, fast forward a year later, uh, when they got signed to Elektra, and people started reading about them in magazines and seeing stuff about them, then I was like, oh yeah, I remember that record. But I never really thought to look for this version because I didn't know the differences, you know. So anyways, it's a record that's been on my radar. Uh... For, for years, I mean, just, you know, if one showed up, you know, I would grab it if the price was right. And they are out there. You can find them online, but they're usually pretty pricey. So I was just, it's not a record that I wanted to pay big money for. Uh, so I just thought, you know, the way I collect records, you know, if there's something I really want, I might go and seek it out. But I tend to wait for records to find their way to me. You know, I just always feel like the right record will find me when it's when it's time. So this one was found locally in Columbus. And a lot of people have asked me how much I paid for it. And I won't say exactly how much I paid for it, but I didn't get it for a dollar. And I didn't pay a huge amount of money for it. I paid a fair, fair price for it. And it's a record I'm glad to have in my collection and, you know, just kind of cool to have it, you know, purchased it close to the anniversary date. Um, also, Motley Crue announced uh, yesterday that they're reuniting for a tour uh, in the summer of 2020. A lot of people have mixed emotions about that. Um, to be honest with, for me, it, it doesn't really make a difference if they're together or not, because pretty much after the second Motley Crue record, I kind of, I didn't really have a lot of interest. I mean, they were still a good band, but they, they were just a different band after the second record. So, you know, I still love the first two records. This this record here is still one of my favorite records ever. It's, it's a great record. Um, so to me, I mean, a lot of people think, you know, some fans think it's great that they're getting back together. Others think it's a cash grab, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, so anyways, glad to have this record, um, you know, kind of tied in with the anniversary and then also Motley Crue announcing they're getting back together. And, uh, like I said, you know, I, I first, uh, stumbled across this record in 1981, which I didn't buy it. But when I went to that little record shop, um, I used to go to this shop every Friday. I mean, like clockwork. It was, there was no questions asked. I was going to the record store on Friday and buying some new records. And just another little thing to tie into this video, my dad used to drive me to the record store every Friday when he got in from work. I would be waiting for him to get home from work and he's like, all right, dad, we're going to the record store. So he would, uh, he would drive me to the record store every Friday and he would never get out of the truck. He would just be like, I'll be waiting here for you when you're done. And I would be like, all right, I'll just be a couple minutes, which he knew a couple minutes meant I'd probably be in there for at least an hour. So my dad would just sit in the truck entertaining himself with the radio, you know, obviously no cell phones to look at Facebook back then. Um, so anyways, he would uh, just sit there and wait on me, wouldn't complain, wouldn't come in and be like, hey, what's up? Why are you taking so long? Anyways, he would uh, just patiently wait for me to come out with a new record. Um, but anyways, today is the 29th anniversary of my dad passing away, so I thought that'd be another nice little tribute to uh, mention him in this video because he was a big part of my early days of collecting records and taking those journeys every Friday to buy a new record. So anyways, that's the story of my find of Motley Crue's Too Fast for Love.
1981 weather records. So, hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.